Technical Tales, How to Build a Plane, A Soaring Adventure of Mechanics, Teamwork, and Friendship, written by Saskia Lacey, illustrated by Martin Sodomka. Meet the Scrap Pack, Eli the Dreamer, a mouse with an elephant-sized imagination, most likely to have his head in the clouds. Flying style, adventurous. Phoebe, the expert, the inside source on flying, having wings helps, most likely to know what's what. Flying style, natural. Hank, the supply guy, the frog with a fantastic fear of heights, most likely to find a junkyard gym. Flying style, prefers life on the ground. Step one, imagine. Eli knew he was a mouse. Tail, check. Whiskers, check. Big ears, double check. But secretly, Eli wondered if he might be part bird. What else could explain his total obsession with flying? He dreamed of sailing on the wind and getting up a close-up of the clouds. Eli had what animals call a serious case of wing envy, and it didn't help that his best friend was a bird. Eli knew the closest he could get to flying was in a plane, but he didn't want to just fly in one, he wanted to build one. It was a huge project, but Eli was known for his big imagination and his crazy ideas. When his friends Phoebe and Hank pitched in, sometimes his projects even worked. The only problem was convincing them to help. Phoebe, how do you feel about building a plane? Eli asked, hopefully. A plane? Phoebe gave her friend a strange look. Why would I build a plane? I have wings. Phoebe laughed and flapped her wings playfully at the mouse. Phoebe had a point. Building a plane didn't make much sense for a, a bird, but maybe Hank would help. A plane? Hank scrunched up his face. I don't know. I really don't like heights. Hank was scared of everything. My legs are made for jumping from rock to rock, not cloud to cloud. Come on, Eli pleaded. Flying is like taking one big jump, the world's biggest jump. But Hank just shook his head nervously. Eli could tell the frog wasn't going anywhere in a plane anytime soon. Eli had nearly given up when he got a break. Phoebe changed her mind. Her curiosity had finally gotten the best of her, and she came to talk to Eli. I've been wondering, do you think a plane's wings works like my wings? She asked. There's one way to find out, said Eli. Phoebe raised her beak in the air thoughtfully. We did make a pretty good team when we built that car. Maybe we can do it again. Eli squeaked. I'm so glad you're going to help. This is going to be amazing. I didn't say yes yet, Phoebe objected. Phoebes, you're in. I can tell you're in. Eli was jumping up and down. Lift. Lift occurs because the air that flows above a wing is fast and the air that flows below it is slow. The different speeds push the wing up. Types of airplanes. With Phoebe on board, Eli could really start dreaming. What kind of plane would they build? A monoplane with one wing would be easy, but a biplane with two wings would have greater lift. The stronger the lift, the more weight the plane could carry. If they built a biplane, Eli could take friends along on his flying adventures. Eli obsessed over the engines. He was pretty sure more was more when it came to engines. Should there be two or three or maybe 23? Step two, build a model. The next day, Eli pitched his monster plane to Phoebe. 23 engines, Phoebe sputtered. There's no way. Let's start small. In fact, maybe our first plane shouldn't have an engine at all. No engine? How will, I, how will we get off the ground, Eli asked. We can build a glider. It will only be able to carry one flyer, but it will help us learn more about how a plane works. If we can get a glider in the air, then we can talk about engines. Eli and Phoebe set to work on the model. As they were finishing up the wings, Hank showed up. Buddy, Eli cried, are you joining the team? I still don't want to fly, Hank said, but I will help you guys build. I came across an engine in the junkyard that I think might be perfect for a plane. An engine, Eli grinned at Phoebe. She rolled her eyes and said, all right, boys, let's get this glider up in the air. Making a plan. Engineers sketch how a plane will look before they start before they ever start building taking time to draw all the parts and pieces lets them think through the project and problem solve while they're safely on the ground flying practice hank and phoebe fussed over eli as they hooked him into the glider are you sure you're ready for this hank asked 
I've been dreaming about it forever, Eli replied. Strap me in. Securing the seats, Eli began to run, pulling the glider behind him. Then with a push from Hank, the wings were in the air. Eli couldn't believe it. He wasn't far off the ground, and he had to be careful. The glider was flim flimsy, but he was flying. You guys, it's working, Eli cried. Hank skipped alongside the plane while Phoebe hooted with glee. Assembling the frame. With new enthusiasm, the friends began to build again. The glider had worked. Now they could build a real plane with an engine, but before they could build the engine, they would need to assemble the fuselage. Eli and Hank weren't sure what a fuselage was or how to build it. Phoebe had done her homework. She explained the fuselage was like a skeleton that held the plane together. The cockpit was at the front and the passengers were in the back. The three friends began to assemble the wood frame. Fuselage. The next day, Eli brought a few friends to help them build the plane. He wanted to take off as soon as possible. Hank, how are we looking on the engine, Eli asked. I found some good stuff, Hank paused. I've also found a lot of junk. Eli groaned, I thought you said you had found the perfect engine. Don't worry, Eli. I won't let you down. Hank smiled and gave a little hop. Wing. Step 3. Build the wings. Soon, Phoebe was giving the scrap pack a wing tutorial. We need to cover the leading edge of the wing with plywood as far as the spar. That will strengthen the wing. Then we'll sand down everything so there aren't any bumps when we cover the whole plane with fabric. Joining the wings to the fuselage. How are we going to attach the wings to the fuselage, Hank asked. Well, it's pretty simple, Phoebe began. The wing is attached to the fuselage with three brackets. Sounds secure to me, Hank admitted. Awesome, let's get started, Eli said excitedly. Flips and Tricks After a hard day's work, Eli went home and thought about all the things he would do once the plane was finished. Maybe he would become Eli Knievel, stunt pilot. Eli imagined himself somersaulting through the air, diving dangerously close to the ground, and then at the last second climbing back up, up, up. Tail assembly. The following day was dedicated to building the tail. Everyone was starting to get tired, but Eli did the best did his best to encourage the crew. We can do this, he said. We just need to finish the tail and the engine. Think of all the places we'll go. France, Thailand, Zimbabwe. Do we really need a tail? Hank grumbled. I don't see the point. Yes, Hank, Phoebe flapped a wing tiredly. Eli added. The tail of a plane works just like Phoebe's tail. It's what makes the plane stable. You don't want us to crash, do you? Don't even say that, Hank moaned. Engine. Step 4. Build the engine. When it was time for the engine, Hank came through for the pack. The engine he found had four cylinders and a double ignition. That meant there were two spark plugs for every cylinder, so the engine would be very reliable. Hank had found them the safest engine in the junkyard. Mounting the engine. Now that they had the engine, they could mount it on the plane. Meanwhile, Phoebe was working on the propeller. I think it's amazingly well balanced if I do say so myself, Phoebe chirped triumphantly. Believe me, that's a good thing. If the propeller isn't balanced, the whole plane will shake. The propeller is what drives the plane into the air. Well done, Phoebes, Eli squeaked. The team worked together to connect the engine and propeller to the body of the plane. In air action. Banking. There was so much to learn about flying. Eli didn't know where to begin. He tried to read a book Phoebe had given him about handling a plane, but he was too excited about flying to pay much attention. Banking. Handling a plane isn't as easy as driving a car. With a plane, even something that looks simple can be complicated. When a plane turns, it's called banking. In order to do this successfully, the pilot must handle multiple controls at the same time. The ailerons cause the wings to tip to the right or left. They make the plane bank or turn. In air action, climbing. The elevator is like a pair of small wings. The pilot can control the elevator to help the plane dive downward or climb upward. Turning. 
The rudder helps keep the turns controlled so the plane doesn't zig or zag. In other words, the rudder helps the plane stay on course. Aerodynamics. As Eli studied the physics of flying, his mind began to wonder, if he was going to be a stunt pilot, he should probably get a parachute. How cool would it be to skydive from his own plane? Aerodynamics. Air is what makes flying possible. It creates lift, but it also makes flying difficult. Think about how hard it is to run against a strong gust of wind, and planes have to move much faster against the wind than we run. Engines work hard to make planes aerodynamic, shaping them so they move as smoothly as possible through the air. Covering the plane. Back in the garage, Eli and the rest of the crew were making good progress. They began covering the aircraft with linen. Are you excited for the test flight? asked Phoebe. Excited, yes, and a little scared, Eli confessed. But don't tell Hank. I think we can get him in that plane, and I don't want him to get so scared that he hops out. Phoebe giggled. I can't wait to see that frog fly. Cockpit. Eli was in charge of designing the cockpit. After all, he was the one who would be piloting the plane. He looked carefully at each of the flying instruments. They would be his trusted advisors while he was flying. If something went wrong, they would let him know. Fuel. Propeller planes require gasoline to fly. This isn't the same gas a car uses. Aviation fuel has a higher standard of purity and is more reliable. Radio communication. Pilots use radios to speak with airport control towers. They talk with controllers about when it's safe to take off and land. Pilots also use radios to ask for help when something goes wrong with the plane or they get lost. The crew added the finishing touches. Eli and his friends took special care painting the plane. They wanted it to look spectacular against the sky. As the paint dried, they admired how far they had come. After weeks of hard work, the plane was ready for its first test flight. Ready, co-pilot, Eli grinned. Ready, Phoebe said, and hopped on board. Hank checked the sky nervously. I don't know if you should fly. I heard that there might be strong winds today. Oh, Hank, Eli shook his head. We'll be fine. Check your flight instruments, Hank began. Don't worry, I've got a parachute and Phoebe has wings, said Eli. Hank sighed. Fine, but no skydiving. Phoebe coached the mouse throughout takeoff. We've got to fly against the wind, so turn the plane around slowly, Phoebe instructed. Now go full throttle. Eli's stomach, Eli's stomach twisted and turned. Could he really do this? The plane shook as it gained speed. Eli felt the plane lift into the air. It was happening. They were flying. Eli and Phoebe cheered as the plane climbed through the air. They flew higher and higher until Hank was just a spot of green on the ground. This is so easy, thought Eli. I knew I was part bird. Don't go too high, Phoebe warned. Remember what Hank said. The wind is stronger up here. But Eli didn't listen. He was too excited to hear Phoebe. Eli, take us down. You're losing control. Don't worry, Phoebes, the mouse cheered. I'm at one with the wind. No, it's too strong. We're going to... The plane took a sickening turn. A powerful wind threw the small plane upside down and sideways. Eli panicked. He couldn't tell which direction was up or down. They were going to crash. Mayday, mayday, Eli shouted into the radio. Eli, what's happening? Hank called back. He's losing control of the plane, Phoebe shouted. Look at your flight instruments, said Hank. What do you see? Eli read back everything he saw to Hank. You've got to level out, the frog croaked. He began to read Eli's instructions from a flight manual. Eli did the best to follow along, twisting and turning each of the instruments until they improved. As the levels changed, he stayed focused. Somehow, he managed to guide the plane to a soft patch of grass. They landed with a thud that shook their bones, but they were safe. The two friends scrambled out of the plane, both relieved to be back on solid ground. Hank ran towards them. He looked even more scared than Eli or Phoebe. 
That did not cure my fear of heights, the frog wheezed. I'm so sorry, Hank, said Eli. I should have listened to you. Flying was an awful idea. That's not true, said Phoebe. We just need to prepare better. Eli shook his head sadly. No, it's okay. I'm a mouse. I don't belong in the air. Phoebe elbowed Hank. Say something. Hank looked at the mouse. Eli tugged on a whisker sadly. Hank sighed. Maybe we could try again. I actually had some ideas about how you could angle your takeoff more like a jump so you don't have such a rocky start. Really? Eli trembled with excitement. You want to try again? I'll, more, I'll be more careful this time. I promise no more stunts in the air. Let's start studying, Phoebe smiled. Hank gathered some manuals from his shop. Phoebe, Eli, and Hank each took turns reading. First off, it's a good idea to learn about weather patterns if we plan on flying long distances, Phoebe said. We should check the wind speed before we leave the ground. Navigation. Using a map. Pilots use a map to plan their flight paths. They need to know where to refuel and where they can land safely. After a crash course in weather, Phoebe and Eli felt ready to try again. Hank stared at the plane, but he still wasn't sure if flying was for him. Don't just sit there and watch. Climb aboard, friend, Eli called. Hank wrung his hands nervously. We'll be fine, Phoebe called to Hank. You've seen all the work we've put into this. We're ready. But what if we crash, Hank asked. We won't crash if you're if you're along. You're the one who got us out of that tailspin the last time, Eli assured him. He started the engine. Just think, you'll be the world's first flying frog. You can travel to the greatest junkyards on earth. Well, there could be some unusual motorcycle parts out there. Things I've never seen before, said Hank. I've always wanted to build a bike, Eli nodded vigorously. Hank straightened his tie. You know, Eli, you don't just dream up these crazy schemes. You get me dreaming up crazy schemes, too. Eli opened his mouth to apologize, but the frog cut him off. I kind of like it, Hank admitted. Well, then, that's what friends are for, the mouse replied. Phoebe chirped her agreement. Eli was the best friend they could ever hope for. Jump in, Hank. With that, he hopped into the front seat. Step 5 take to the sky. The, free, the three friends prepared for takeoff. Eli checked the flight instruments carefully, keeping his eye on them as they climbed. Looking good, Phoebe cheered. Thanks, Phoebes. I think I'm starting to get the hang of it. Hank croaked happily. Just don't try to talk me into skydiving. As they lift, leveled off, Eli let himself take a breath and looked around. The view was spectacular. He had his best friends by his side. They could go anywhere they wanted, make anything they dared, and dream enormous pie-in-the-sky-sized dreams. The scrap pack spent the rest of the day in the sky. No one, not even Hank, wanted to come down. Flight instruments. The compass, airspeed indicator, turn and bank indicator. Flying 101. If you want to fly like Eli, here are a few things you'll need to know before you climb into the cockpit. Airspeed indicator. Compares the plane's speed to the surrounding air. The red area shows high speeds that are dangerous to the plane's structure. If the, pli if the pilot flies too fast, the plane may be damaged. Compass. Tells the direction of the plane's present course at least most of the time. Sometimes compasses can be inaccurate. Pilots should always bring maps when they fly, just in case. Turn and bank indicator shows the plane's bank or position in relation to the ground. If the red ball is between the lines, the pilot is flying correctly. Altimeter shows how high the plane is above sea level. The big hand tells how many hundreds of feet the plane is above sea level. The little hand shows how many thousands of feet. Vertical speed indicator tells how fast the plane is falling or climbing. If the hand is at 1, the plane is climbing 1,000 feet per minute. If the hand is at 0, the plane is level, neither climbing or falling. Artificial horizon shows where the plane is compared to the horizon. 
This instrument helps the pilot navigate even when the plane is flying through a cloud or heavy rain. How to build a plane in five steps. One, imagine, does the idea of gliding through the clouds make you feel excited or, or queasy? If you're planning on piloting, it's best not to have a fear of heights. Be brave, you might just be the next Eli Knievel. Are you up for the challenge? Two, build a model. It's not easy getting something heavy off the ground. Start small, build a model, do a test run. Does it fly? If yes, it's time to move on to bigger and better wings. Three, build the wings. As Phoebe will tell you, wings are pretty much essential when it comes to flying. Wings create lift, the force that holds an airplane in the air, important for flying, very. Four, build the engine. The engine of a plane can be a pilot's best friend or his worst enemy. Engine problems can lead to plane crashes. Don't let that happen to you. When you're building an engine, it's important to take your time. Triple check your work. Five, take to the sky. You did it. Welcome to life in the clouds. Don't forget to check the weather and test your navigation tools before you head down the runway. The end.